I am wrestling, you're not weak for me. Celebrate what I am. Celebrate what I have been. Celebrate what I represent. And celebrate the many ways I have impacted your life. I will survive this test as I have survived others. I am forever etched into the very fiber of all mankind. The world needs me. Time is on my side. History guarantees me. I am wrestling. Do not wait for me. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual presidential debate for the president of wrestling. We have two great candidates tonight. We have for the T-Row and Funky Show, episode 44. On one end, we have Tommy Rollins, and on the other end, we have Ben Askew, and they'll be debating all the hot topics in the sport of wrestling and figuring out how to make the sport better moving forward. Um, this is how the process will work. Each candidate will be given 90 seconds to answer the questions at hand, and then the other guy will have 90 seconds, and then a short rebuttal. But before that, I'll give each guy a 30-second opening statement. Ben Askren, your first go. Thanks for having me on, Mark. I, I'm really looking forward to be the president of the sport of wrestling. I think I can do great things. I think wrestling is not pushing itself to the peak of its economic performance. We have a lot of debt, and we really, really, really need to make wrestling great again. So that's what I'm here for, Mark. I'm here to make wrestling great again. I don't know that I can say that about my opponent. Okay. Thank you very much, Ben. Yeah, it was good to hear from you. Uh, Tommy Rollins, you have 30 seconds. Your opening statement, go ahead. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you guys uh, putting this debate together. I think it's only fitting that I thank our debate sponsor, Defense Soap. Defend what you have built. Um, without them, we wouldn't be able to you know, broadcast this discussion Tommy, to all of the Tommy, wrestling fans. Tommy, you just fans. stop. I know you're pandering to your... To you your, to be quiet. Uh, you know what? The you know, it, it requires empathy. And you need to be familiar with the people that stir the drink, Mr. Askren. Tommy, and I'm you're thankful. And I'm for. thankful for the people. For. I'm thankful for everybody that can and help deliver a product to the wrestling fans. At any, um, I'm excited about tonight. I think we have a lot of great topics to discuss. I'm excited to um, uh, have you know constructive dialogue with my opponent here. You know, candidly, I think I think he's a sensationalist. I think he likes to stir the pot without any, you know, substantial is this time, is this time uh, up yet? information. Um, Go ahead. And so I'm ex I'm excited to vet those 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 points and and continue with the discussion, Mark. All right, and and gentlemen, please, if we could stay on topic, if we could allow the the your opponent time to willfully state his opinion, uh, that would help the process. So, first question we're taking, um, and well, this goes, we'll start with you, Mr. Rollins. Um, should we stick with the singlet, or should we switch to the two-piece wrestling uniform? You know, that's a great question. It's, uh, it's, an, it's, it's, for the most part, it's an age-old debate, but I think, um, and I think my opponent would agree with me, but, you know, even though a wrestling singlet is a clear identifier to the uniqueness of our sport and it, it, it links us to the tradition of the sport dating back to thousands of years, I think with what's going on in the world today and be able to have the you know appropriate amount of participation and to keep kids engaged and, you know, we have enough hurdles to overcome. This sport is tough enough as it is, Mark, and I think all of our viewers and all of our voters out there would agree and so, so to make to create one more hurdle unnecessarily, and have a six-year-old child uh, half naked in front of a gym full of people putting it on the line, it just doesn't seem to construct, uh, you know, the appropriate experience for young kids. And if we get rid of our singlet, I don't think the experience of wrestling will dim be diminished whatsoever. But if we can have uh, a few more people. Uh, strive for the sport, stick in the sport, and and really focus on 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 the merits of wrestling as opposed to being half naked in front of their you know mom and dad and friends and opponents while they're trying to beat another guy. You know, by golly, we should give it a shot. I don't think there's any negative in doing something like that. All right, Tommy, thank you very much. Uh, ben asking the same question: Should we 
should we keep the singlet or should we move to uh, a two-piece uniform? Well, uh, my opponent had a very long-winded answer, and I'm just going to start and say, I don't know who invented the singlet. It could have been Russia. It could have been China. It could have been someone sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds for all we know. But the bottom line is, in 2016, the singlet's got to go. It hurts the participation. No, no kid who's never been in wrestling doesn't want get to get on the mat half naked and show his junk to everybody. So as far as I'm concerned, there is no debate here. Now, Tommy had a nice soft answer, but I'm going to give you a nice strong answer because that's the kind of candidate I am. I am not long time out, Tommy. I'm Ben Askren. I'm here to be the president. I'm here to be strong. I'm here to make wrestling great again. And let's start by getting rid of the singlet. And how would you guys go about doing that? That's where that's the difference between my opponent and I. He's all hot air, okay? He makes great comments. He makes poignant comments. And it's not backed up by anything circumstantial that would allow this thing to actually happen. I have a plan, Mark. I have a plan that would make sense. This guy's just saying get rid of it. He has no plan to back it up. I and? I would put uh I you know well, I'm gonna have the wrestling congress put that into action. I'm not a fan of the executive order, uh, but we're we're gonna get on that one. That that will be my first course of action when I get into office is is getting rid of the singlet. And now my opponent may say I am all talk no action, but that is just not the case. And frankly, I don't think my opponent, long time out Tommy, has the stamina to get this done. I don't know where the long time out stuff comes from. It doesn't make any sense to me. This guy's just a loose cannon look at, looking for some headlines to, to, to fuel his businesses and all the different things that he's working on. Tommy, could you, could you uh, give us some insight into what your plan is? To get rid of the yeah, my plan. I would I would get in touch with all of the relevant governing bodies, starting with USA Wrestling, the National Wrestling Coaches Association, New Way, My Way, AAU, you name it. I'd get with all the state associations at the youth level, elementary level, junior high level, high school level, and I would put together a memorandum that stipulates as to why we should venture down this path and and list the bullet point effects of how transitioning from a singlet to um, you know a, a, another type of uniform can only benefit from our sport anything there is really isn't anything that's negative that can come from it come from it and I'd look to get a cohesive effort among the governing bodies to 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 follow through with this and I think that they would listen to it I think especially at the youth level I don't know if it's necessary at the Olympic level or even the collegiate level, I think, because by the time you get to that level of wrestling, I don't think the competitors give a damn, to be quite honest. And we could leave that optional. But I think as an introductory uh, piece of the sport at the youth level, we've got to do this and we've got to get um, cohesion from the governing bodies and from the from the state from the state institutions and the state uh, sponsored coaches associations. And that's that would be my plan. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, gentlemen, we will take it to the next topic. Um, <clears throat> you know, we, we've seen different uh, finishes to the United States, USA Wrestling at the World and Olympic Championships. Um, we, we've seen some great finishes in the past and some up and down finishes in, more recently. Do you guys think that the United States as a country should do away with folk style? Ben Askren. You first. You have 90 seconds. Yep. Th thank you for the floor, floor, Mr. Bader. And listen, if, if I'm the president of wrestling, we will not get rid of folk style wrestling in America. And, and what a lot of Americans need to realize. Spoken that, from a guy who lines his pockets by teaching folk style and scrambling. How convenient. Hey, hey, let me let me get my 90 spoken seconds. Spoken from I, a man. I did interrupt spoken you. Spoken from a man who makes a living teaching scrambling how convenient hey, i didn't interrupt you i didn't interrupt you you, you can just keep to yourself though. loose cannon Long talk about Tommy. agenda talk about agenda i care about the people not my business well if we're gonna get, go down that road right away mr tommy i have already outlined and proven for a fact that folk style wrestling has no effect on the outcome of international competitions american wrestlers are doing best when they're coming right out of college and competing, and the longer they compete, their results just don't improve. It has happened for a few people, but for the vast majority, 
of Americans, their best results are coming either while they're in college or within one year of college. So there is, there's absolutely no proof. You can lie, you can beat around the bush, you can say whatever you want, but you have no statistics to back up the fact that folks uh, freestyle wrestling full-time actually improves skills. Now that is as sane as that sounds. That's the facts, Tommy. Mark, can I ask my opponent a question? Uh, Tommy, you you have thirty seconds to to answer the or excuse me, ninety Mr. seconds. Mr. Ben Askren, yes or no question? Do you have any oh. statistics? Do you have any statistics that show you that if American wrestling was all freestyle from age six on, that we wouldn't be better? You don't have you any have, statistics going the other way. Do you? No, you need to answer my question. Do you have any statistics that suggest we wouldn't be better if we started wrestling freestyle at age six? I would say the statistics. Your are statistics are extremely one-sided. The 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 proposal we're do, making. Well, do you, we have you nothing. Put in the you, don't interrupt me. You statistics? can't interrupt me. The proposal you're making you didn't come suggests suggests that a process that we've never implemented won't be as good as the one that we have. Now, thank God the founding fathers of wrestling didn't think that way 50 years ago, okay? Sometimes you got to do things new. You got to do things different. You've got to innovate. You're stuck in yesterday's times. You're, you're, you're sticking with the process that makes sense for you. And your statistics are going against something that we've never done before. It's completely a skewed discussion. You're not, you're not really looking at the whole picture here. And I resent the fact that you're saying that you have facts to base your opinion on. Listen, I, I came to the debate table with some facts. You have nothing, Tommy. You, you have opinions, and that's all you have is opinions. I can you tell never you. Never do any research. I can tell you some facts. Well, you, Russian, you started doing some research, and you took give a long you, time out. I'll give you some facts, uh, Loose Cannon Askren. Um, I'll tell you this: there's fifty thousand competitors in the country of Russia compared to our approximately 1 million. So they have 5% of the pool of athletes to pick, pick from. Wait, so let me ask you a question. Listen, Tommy. don't interrupt no, me. No, no, it's my turn. I, it's hey, my Mr. Bader, Mr. Bader, I know you went to Missouri and so did my opponent, but I think you should intervene here and get him to stop when I'm talking. Please have, have a civil conversation, gentlemen. Tommy, you have the floor. Continue. Thank you. 50,000 competitors in Russia compared to the 1 million in the United States. They continue to beat us every year. The c biggest common denominator between their numbers and ours is the style of wrestling that they're introduced to when they start wrestling. And, and, and folk style and everything that comes with it is, co is a complete distraction from our dominance at the world level. I think if we switched from folk style to freestyle, we'd have some sour grapes from some old school guys but participation would not go away jobs would still be in the wrestling economy we'd still have coaches we'd still have wrestling camps heck you'd still even get get have, get to have your academy even though scrambling wouldn't be as important anymore and we'd we'd be able to uh, go on our long way within, uh, within five years don't you need a long time out already? dominating on the world level and our sport would flourish all right let, let me have let me have some time here i need to rebut his points i really do so, Tommy, and two things. I would want to, too, if I were you. Two things here. Number one, the reason Russia wins is steroids and referee cheating. We all know that. That's a fact. And then, number two, are you saying that you want our wrestling population to be cut by 20 to make us more effective? Because I'd rather have a million kids participating in wrestling than 50,000. Can you honestly tell me if as we switched to freestyle, we would we would lose 95% of oh, our I, I thought that's the point. What kind making. of I'm comment sorry. is that? What I'm saying is that they have less of a pool to pick from, but since they have a style that is exactly or, or is what... Or it state-sponsored doping? You're, so you're telling me that the reason, the only reason Russian Russia is <laughs> superior to the United Stop States... It. Excuse me? His time's got to be up. His time, next topic. Let's go. Moving on. I think I won that one. I'll take it. All right. Let's let's now we want, let's move to you know the domestic side of things, fellas. Um, there's there's been a lot of debate over the last uh, few years about the NCAA championships, um, and and how to increase awareness and, and bring a, a team element aside from the individual tournament. Um, should the NCAA championship sponsor uh, a dual meet team championships? And if so, should it be alongside with 
and also having the individual championship, or would you have to exclude the individual championship and almost kind of flip it like they talked about a few years ago um, and make it uh, not the official NCAA championships? Which one should be official? Tommy, Tommy, you have the floor. I do. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're such a gentleman. Um, Mark, I, I think I think this is a tough question to answer in a short debate, but I'll be as brief as I can be. I think that we need to put some credence into team performance, dual meet performance. I don't think there's enough merit in what goes on in dual meets. That being said, the greatest event in the world, even though there's a higher level of wrestling at the Olympic level, the greatest event in the world is the NCAA individual championships where team score is kept. I don't think we should rock the boat and mess with that event too much, but I do think we should build a bridge and build some type of um, value in a, a, a dual meet championship during the middle of the season. And my proposal would be to have um, the top eight or ten finishing uh, dual meet teams from our dual meet national championship in the middle of the season to start the NCAA individual wrestling tournament with a set amount of points. For example, if Ohio State were to win the national dual meet championship, they would start the NCAA wah, tournament wah, with, wah. with 12 points. Second place, you know, Iowa, they'd start the NCAA tournament with – you know, 10 points, so on and so forth. So where there's a, an incredible incentive to not only participate in the National Dual Meet Championship, but win it. And that would be my a long time initial out. proposer. I don't need a long time out. You don't have the stamina to compete with me, loose cannon. Is it my turn now? Do I have the And form? you can you get to answer the question. You have 90 seconds, well, and then we can go back. I think Mr. Rollins' answer was... It's Rollins. Whatever the heck it is. It's quite awful. That's what I think. So what I would propose, Mr. Bader, is like track and field. They have an indoor and an outdoor championship. There is no reason that the NCAA can't offer two national titles to one sport. There's just no reason for that. So I would actually agree with the small part of my opponent's answer that the NCAA tournament wrestling tournament is the greatest event for wrestling on planet Earth. But what I would do is I would add in a dual meet portion, which would happen after... The NCAA tournament. So what I would say is the top 16 point scoring teams from the NCAA championships enter into a dual portion that, that then starts, you know, and maybe goes for two or three weeks after. Uh, I think that's the best way to do it. You give two NCAA trophies. There's no reason that that can't happen. And then maybe you shorten up the beginning of the season, uh, you know, which I know we're something we're going to probably debate later is should wrestling be a one semester sport? And I think the answer to that is yes, it should. Yeah, but that's not what we're debating right now. Well, I, that was just part of my answer. I, am I debating you or am I debating Tommy? Who am I Mark, debating I didn't, here? I didn't even understand what he just said. I'm sorry. Who am I debating? Is this two on one here? <laughs> two on one? You got to be kidding me. Uh, my The moderator went to Missouri and wrestled at Missouri, and my opponent did. So if anybody should be concerned, it would be me. Mr. Rollins, you're out of line. What? Am I wrong? Tommy, you have no respect for wrestling people. Okay, no this, you're out of line. Too much locker room talk from you, Tommy. It's just banter. <laughs> On to the next topic, as we are obviously done with that hey, one. Hey, hey, I want to ask you, uh, Mark, have you seen the size of Tommy's hands? Quite next small. Question. Quite small. Unbelievable. This is unbelievable. Completely inappropriate. Of the 2016 Olympic Games and some of the alleged scandals that may or may not have taken place with, between referees, um, uh, higher level officials potentially punching females, um, cheating, and, and et cetera, putting hands on referees. If you become the president of wrestling, what will you do to clean up this mess that we have gotten in um, with the governing body? internationally of our sport in UWW. Well, I believe I have the floor. So if, if I was, if, I'm, I'm sorry with the ifs, when I become the president of wrestling, obviously one of my areas of jurisdiction will be cleaning up the UWW. Now this is an organization in imminent need of cleaning up. They, they've just got their fat cats. They're getting kickbacks from everywhere. They're taking money under the table. There need to be some serious, serious, serious fixes in this organization. So that will be uh, one of my first orders of business is addressing that organization, getting them to run things straight, because 
Without them, who is the governing body of Freestyle and Greco International Wrestling, wrestling as a whole around the globe will never grow because it will always be seen as a crooked and dirty sport, which is what the UWW is making it seem like. So I say we got to get the fat cats out of there. We got to get the guys who are getting the kickbacks from Wall Street. We got to get them out of the UWW because it's important to make wrestling great again. Tommy. Well, I think when I'm elected president of wrestling, I, I, I firmly believe that I will only do as good of a job as the strength of my leadership team, and that will be a hand-selected group of people um, that is yet to be determined, but I will release it prior to my election. And my leadership team will investigate all of this stuff thoroughly. I think one thing that my opponent wants to do is just throw the baby out with the bathwater and, and penalize individuals, but I think when when corruption exists, we need to hit we need to hit you know individuals. They're fall guys, so he wants to take out an individual. There's just going to be another individual that takes the blame the next time. I think you need to penalize the country, not the individual that is um, that is that is that is, that is in question. I'm getting interrupted again. Interrupted again, Mr. Bader. Mr. Bader, I know you went to school with my opponent, just take but a can long you time please out. regulate this debate? At any rate, I would penalize the country because if you penalize the individual, the country doesn't hurt. You've got to hit them where it hurts. You've got it's it's like it's like um, going against countries that sponsor terrorism, harbor terrorists, the way Ronnie Reagan did when he flew missiles over Muammar Gaddafi's deal. That's that's the way that I would do it, and um, I wouldn't punish the individuals. Like 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 a mobster, like my loose cannon opponent wants to do. He wants to take out individuals one by one. I'd penalize the the, the country. Tommy, I'm the not federation. talking about countries. I'm talking about an organization, the UWW, which is the my leadership. Body. My leadership team addressed. would be the organization. My 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 my. So you're just my, gonna take them over? No, that when I get elected, my leadership team will be people that I choose to help me lead the the sport. So that it goes without being said. Ah. And Mr. Have, you have 90 seconds. Well, obviously, you know, what you heard there was Tommy's going to take all of his cronies who are giving him uh, the money behind the scenes and put them into places of power. Typical poli politician right there. Typical political talk. And like I said, the, I'm, says a, the guy, I'm says a man the guy who sells, people. Says the guy who sells folk style scramble videos for a living and he wants to keep folk style in place. That's even not though what we're talking about right now. We're talking it. about the UWW being a corrupt organization. So the UWW needs to be addressed. They, they chickened out in the Russian doping scandal. They, they chickened out and put their head in the sand on, the, on this referee, you know, refereeing issue. They need to be addressed as a governing body. And the only way that Freestyle Greco Roman Wrestling are going to grow around the world is if the UWW is addressed. And that is a key component to making wrestling great again. Tommy, uh, you are free to rebut if you'd like. I don't think I need to say anything back to that. Because you got nothing to say. <laughs> Let's move on. All right, guys, we're going to go to, we're going to take the Twitter for this one. And it is Johnny Bravo 187. Let me, let me guess. It's, it's Tyrone Woodley calling in. Is that, is that probably what we have, Mr. Bader? Who's a better coach? Tom Brands or Terry Brands? No, I. Tom or Terry? Oh, that's a tough one. Ooh, go, go ahead, no Tommy. Who's a better coach, Tom or Terry Brands? Askren, you're up first. I'm a, no, I answered the last Boom. question first. Boom! Thank you. No, Tommy's up you're first. Up. Mr. Askren, you are up first. Well, <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stick with my guy, Terry Brands. Uh, obviously, since they are twins, they do share quite a few similarities. But I like that that Terry Brands. He he has a little more. Uh, he's got a little more fire in him. He's he he's a little more resistant to authority and the way the way the system is supposed to be ran. Uh, I like what this guy does. He he may be a little more behind the scenes than Tom, who is the head coach. But I want to say he's the heart of that organization. So uh, if I have to pick a leader and a head coach for my team, I'm going with Terry Brands. I think that's uh, he's one of the best coaches in the United States, one of the best coaches in the world. And Tom or Terry, I'm picking Terry. 
All right. Tommy pretty Rollins. Simple, pretty simple for me. I think Tom Brands has uh, more experience and a better um, bad experience or, or temperament to coach a collective large group of people, a, a program. But if you need one guy to get it done and you've got, you know, a year to, to train him and you want to get a one on one coach, Terry Brands. Oh, so typical political. I think Terry Brands I think Terry Brands is a better typical Terry Brands is a better answer. individual one on one coach. Tom Brands is better at the collective. That's a that's a that's a politician's answer right there, Bader. You need, well, my, to, my, you my need opponent, to make my opponent clarify his answer. The the question was is it Tom Brands or Terry Brands? And my opponent is doing what most politicians do. He's beating around the bush. He's not giving us a clear answer. My opponent thinks that life is black and white. And I think all of the wrestling fans out there that want to see our sport grow realize that there's a lot of ways to skin the cat. There's a lot of ways to get the job done. And there's not one right way and one wrong way. There's a number of right ways and there's a number of wrong ways. And my opponent wants to think that the, the, the world is black and white and very easy to decipher. And it's just not. And I think people will come to their senses when it comes time to vote. Yeah. Typical we have politician. Another... I'm sorry, Matt, please. Typical politician. He, did, he still did not answer the question. He beat around the bush. He went in a circle. He talked a lot of hot air. But at the end of the day, he didn't answer the question. What you're going to get from a president like me is straight answers. No, no Folk style business. wrestling reigns supreme by my scramble videos. That's what we're going to hear. Hell, if I'm president, I might make the whole world folk style wrestling. Tommy, keep it up. Of course. I wouldn't doubt it. All right, gentlemen. Um, let's take it back to the NCAA wrestling. Um, this is uh, both has to do with folk style. But we'll start with NCAA and we'll, we'll say it should be up in, is and could the other one be implemented here. Two two things to this: Should riding time stay or go? Should we implement a push out rule in college? Tommy, can you now, go now, first? Now, Tommy, we got two questions there, so make sure you answer at least one right. of them, not none of them. I think riding time is absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't encourage action. I know that the rules of folk style is about control, but there is nothing worse than watching uh, someone be a leech on top of somebody for the sake of getting a riding time point. There's nothing exciting about it. There's nothing innovative about it. There's nothing that's American about it. And we should get rid of it. Push out rule. I think we should keep or we should, we should add. Um, I do think it's going to be difficult on the edge with scrambling. I think my, if anybody knows about scrambling, it's my opponent. I'm not talking about wrestling. I'm talking about scrambling from, from issues, but at any rate, I think that, you know, the push out rule, if we don't interpret it and state the rule differently than freestyle, then it could get interesting. But long story short, Mark, get rid of riding time. It's a shame. It's terrible. It's 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 a it's a law that was passed a hundred years ago that made sense at the time. When we had a law. when we had a law. when we had when we had horse hair mats. Um, now we got Resolite mats. The sport is, is modern, and we can change that. We got and, dollar um, mats, too. And we should add a push-out rule. All right, thank you. Ben? Well, typical, typical, my, you know, my, my opponent, he didn't, he didn't get to the point. It's just so many words to get to the point, and I'm going to get to the point real fast. Riding time is very important to folks out wrestling. Because oh, the essence God. of folk style wrestling is your ability to control your opponent. By my scramble now, videos. Eh, 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 eh. You don't scramble. By my scramble top, videos. Tommy. I, I made a living as a folk style wrestler. I don't have an agenda. Now, now remember, my, the opponent who is interrupting me, he, he had less pins in his entire four-year career than I had in a pinning streak my senior year of college. So my, my opponent knows very little about wrestling in the top position. So forgive him for that, please. Um, so back, back to my, the, the original... I'm not a fan of boredom. So I let my opponents go. Big deal. Ha. So back to my original point, And if I could not be interrupted, that would be fantastic. What I was saying was that the essence of folk style wrestling is control. And now what happened that, that made the sport a little more boring was the referees were refusing to call stalling with the new stalling rules. 
I see no problem with with uh, right in time point staying in folk style wrestling. And I would also be against adding the push out point. I think the NCA as a governing body, they're making moves. They're doing a lot better than they have been doing. And the edge rules were called, while not perfectly, they were called very effectively last year. Uh, for stalling points on the edge, and it kept wrestling in the center of the mat. So the NCA, as a governing body, has been doing a great job. Uh, I would encourage them to keep doing a great job, and I think the writing time point should stay, and I think the push out should stay away. Uh, okay, rebuttal from either guy. I think my opponent has clearly shown. Tommy, the... how many pins did you have in college? I had uh, not as many as you. What's your point? I, um, like, I think my opponent like has 10? shown that he's he's lining his own pockets. He's he's satisfying. He's dovetailing to his own business interests, um, and and really not upholding his responsibility to the wrestling community to do what's best for the sport. So I think the the voters will see that when the time comes. All right, um, let's stick with the NCAA NCAA wrestling topic. Um, some people think the, the college wrestling season is just too long and too drawn out, and there's been a lot of talk in the past about making it a one-semester sport. I uh, would like to know how you guys feel about it, Tommy. You want to go ahead and go first? I think my opponent and I are probably going to agree with this. I do think it should be a one-semester sport. I think we should pack um, only good events in a shorter amount of time. I think it's better for the athletes. It's better to build, you know, a marketing platform. Better to build a TV schedule in a tighter time frame. We should probably put it in semesters that don't compete with March Madness um, and or collegiate football. And so I think, you know, I think we should be a one semester sport. I think we should be strategic in the timing that we have it. I think possibly starting in January or you know January semester and running our NCAA tournament in April ish would probably allow for us to get better viewership, more eyeballs on the TV screen for our bigger events. And and I think it's better for the for the athletes, better for the coaches, better for the fans, better for the economy of wrestling. And I absolutely support the idea of doing that. And if I'm elected president, it will be one of my five main strategic initiatives. Well, I, I, I actually agree with with my opponent for once. He, he made some sense there. I, I like the idea about getting more high-level events on television. That's a very important component to growing wrestling. Uh, and, and as I outlined in, in my in prior statement about um, the dual versus individual championship, I think we could hold a dual championship after the NCAA championship uh, individual. So I, what I think we could do, like Tommy mentioned, to get off March Madness, which is important, is move the individual tournament a week or two early, um, make it a sem only one semester sport that helps out with a lot of uh, educational things, make it a lot easier for athletes. So I think you're looking at uh, somewhere around uh, January to a April schedule, and I think that's going to be more effective for TV, more effective for everything else. All right. Um, good on that one, fellas, it sounds like. Next question. Who would you take in their prime, Jordan Burroughs or Kenny Monday? Askren, you're up first. Oh, I, I got this one. This is no problem. I don't know that there's a 74-kilogram wrestler on the planet that could beat a prime Jordan Burroughs. His timing, his shots, his transition to his lace were just so good. And while Kenny Monday has a, a high level of athleticism and uh, was probably the sec what I would say the second best 74 kg guy ever in American wrestling. I just don't know that he would be able to deal with um, the, the timing and the on point attacks and the transitions of Jordan Burroughs. You know, on, on top of that, obviously Jordan Burroughs, uh, he was just one of those guys who could always find a way to get the job done when, when it needed to be done. And it wasn't always pretty, and you know, sometimes it it wasn't a clean shot, but he always finished hard. And so, if I'm if I'm picking Kenny Monday versus Jordan Burroughs, I'm taking Jordan Burroughs. And now, listen, remember the last time you asked a question like this, my opponent failed to give an answer. Typical political hot air. Make please, Mr. Bader, make my opponent actually give an answer. Are you done? Tommy, you are 
Give us an answer, Tommy. Don't give us a whole. I bunch think of words this question, this it. question is like asking who's a better president, Thomas oh, Jefferson or Abraham this. Lincoln or George Washington. But I'm going to answer it. I'm going to give you a clear answer. Just give me a minute here. I know you're not um, going to give a clear answer. Kenny Monday, I think, competed and beated, beated, Be beat de defeated, beat defeated. Excuse me, slip okay. of the tongue. Okay, um, defeated. Better wrestlers than Jordan Burroughs defeated, in my opinion. Arsene Fatsayev, David Schultz, the list goes on. That being said, the run that Jordan Burroughs went on from 2011 through 2015 and into 2016 up until the Olympics is almost unprecedented on a global level. And I'm going to have to agree with my opponent here. If you, When push comes to shove, I'm taking Jordan Burroughs over Kenny Monday. Let's call it eight matches out of ten. I give him the nod. But I will say, I think that Monday had to compete against tougher wrestlers than Burroughs has in his career. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't need to have a rebuttal. But I just want to say I'm thankful that that you know my longtime politician friend finally, finally gives us an answer. I really thought he was going to say both guys. He was going to try to pick both of them like he did on the last question. And that's what we get out of people like him. When this you is bet, absolutely when, when you bet, hey, it's, it's my, I get my time for my rebuttal. You just sit there and be quiet. When, when, you, when you're in politics too long, you learn to talk out both sides of your mouth. Now, listen, I, got, I have the transcripts from Tommy talking to a private group of bankers the other day. And I'll tell you, what he's telling us during this debate does not match those transcripts. He's talking out of both sides of his mouth. He's got a private persona and a public persona. Typical politician. We can't have eight more years of this guy in office. I've never been in office, but just keep on making stories up. Uh, All right, uh, guys. Well, we do have one more from social media, and then we have uh, just a couple of others. Um, and this one is more on the philosophical side. Does What's his talent, name? Does talent exist or can it Oh God! Be oh developed? God! I, I oh Tommy gets to go first. Hi, right, Mister Askin. Tommy, you're first. Okay. Does get, ready, talent, get ready for a lot of hot air here, guys. Get does ready talent for a lot of hot air. exist? Does talent exist? Yes. People are born with specific skills that they are innately programmed with that they have superior to other people. I heard you came out of your mom shooting a single leg. That, that, no, I did not. That's, that's called talent. Some men are faster than other men. Some men are stronger than other men. Some men have better awareness of what's around them in an athletic sense than other men or women for that matter. Some people are naturally smarter than others. Not everybody can be a brain surgeon. Not everybody can win the 100-meter dash in a sprint. Not everybody can bench press 600 pounds. Talent absolutely exists. My opponent likes to use this as a motivational tool with his young pupils at his academy so that they feel like they are in control of their own destiny. And although that approach is quite admirable, because I think to some extent people like to use talent as an excuse, and I disagree with that, talent absolutely exists. And whether or not you want to overcome somebody else's talents and beat them in anyway is your prerogative, and that's a different discussion. But to, have, but to say that someone doesn't have advantages over other people in every single walk of life, whether it be your intellect, your physical capabilities, or anything of that nature. Talent absolutely exists. It exists all around us. It is the reality of the world that we live in. It is not meant to be a crutch for the people who don't have the same talents. They There are ways to overcome and beat a person that's more talented, to be a brain surgeon when you're not as smart as other brain surgeons, to be a 100-meter dash champion when you don't have as much talent as the other 100-meter dash guy that you're racing against. There's ways to bench press more than a guy that has more natural ability to be strong than you do. But at the end of the day, people have talent. Talent exists. There's no doubt about it. 
what what you did not hear I'm, there, what you did not there hear there from my opponent was an actual definition of talent. Because I I would like to hear one because I don't think he could give a very good definition of talent. So when we're talking in the sport of wrestling, they, are there innate advantages? Yes. So if we're saying being the, innate, being ex- innate advantages is 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 basically talent. That it's it's like it's like our politicians when they can't stay. They cannot say the words radical Islamic terrorism. My opponent cannot say talent. He instead says innate what advantages. Is it? What is like it? a typical define blowhard it. politician define, that define can't talent. face the facts. Innate advantages. For all the voters out there, can we all agree that innate, innate meaning natural, something that you just have, it's innate, it's inside of you. And advantages, innate advantages. When you put those two words together, can we all agree that that's the same damn thing as talent? But when this is say, ridiculous. My opponent is twisting the words up to make an argument that makes absolutely no sense. Continue. Listen, so it's my 90 seconds, so you need to go take a long time out and, and be quiet over there. Listen, as far as innate advantages are concerned, my point is there's so many different ones you can use in the sport of wrestling that – it doesn't make any one better than others. For example, innate advantage is having two le- having two legs. That's an innate advantage. Well, Anthony Robles won a national title with one of them, right? So did he not have talent? No, he you know he had things. He had he had good grip strength that was built from walking on crutches. Okay, me if, if you say advantages. If you say well, an explode being very explosive is a huge talent to have. Well, I don't have that, but I still won. So you can come up with any different kind of skill set you want to win in wrestling. So saying that only talent wins, that's the easy way out. That is a very easy way. Wrestling I didn't say and, talent wins. In wrestling and listen, in life. Mark, can you, can you listen to this, man? I didn't say talent wins. I said talent exists. No, you that is, did. That is you a did. completely – he is said, changing the fundamental discussion we're having. That's not true, I didn't Tommy. say talent wins. You I said, said talent exists. When I told talent my does exist. that they're in charge of their own destiny – that is not true. You said that. That, in fact, is true. They are in charge of their own destiny because in the sport of wrestling and in life, talent you can does check exist. check the facts on you my just... website. Fact checker. We need a fact checker here. I didn't say that okay. people you did say aren't that. in control you of their own that. destiny. You said Ben Askren tells his pupils talent doesn't exist to motivate them to tell them they're in charge of their own destiny. But – that. Yeah, but true. I didn't say that you you're not in charge of it. That's what you said. That is exactly. Oh my god! Go, go back. Again. We need to we need to replay here. Talent go exists. Talent, talent does not exists. exist. Talent doesn't mean that you win. Talent doesn't mean that you win because you can't it define it. it what is it? Is it being fast? It is exists. it being strong? Is it being flexible? Is it having good cardio? Is it being intelligent? Is it being tough? What is it? You can't prove it. You can't prove it. There's never oh, in, the, in the history of the in the history. Of, of the world, there's never been a study that's proved that innate advantages make <laughs> talent in wrestling. Oh my never god! Never been proven, not once. Unbelievable. Never been proven. Unbelievable. Man, I'm about facts, Tommy. I'm about facts. I, I know you just about hot air yeah, talking. Innate, I'm about innate. Facts. It's, you know, it's. I I think there's some innate advantages that I have in proving my point better than you can. I mean, I think that's an innate advantage ah, that I have. Ah. So were you born with it or was it developed? Both. Both. I think it was a skill that was that, uh, naturally possessed, and I've honed in on it and obviously done a better job than you. All right, guys. Uh, I would take one from the crowd here. Um, this one comes from Facebook, and the question is, if elected, who would you rather have on your cabinet, Christian Piles or Willie Saylor? Ben Askren, could you please answer first? Sure. I, you know what? Uh, I'm going to take Christian Piles because Willie Saylor is kind of a political. I listened to his show. It's a good show. But, you know, they got kind of low ratings because Willie's on there. Piles is the one that keeps the ratings up. Willie is the one that brings the ratings down because he's full of hot air. He talks in circles. You know, this whole thing he thinks only the only way to do good in college wrestling is cutting weight and staying in the lower weight class. When Piles... He's a man of the facts. He looks at the facts, and, and the facts are going up, increases performance in college wrestling. That's been proven. So I like Christian Piles because he is not a typical politician. He's a man of facts. He's a man of numbers. He's a man of integrity. 
and and he's my kind of person. Now I know Tommy is gonna pick Willie because Willie's got a lot of air. He's flashy. He he's white collar Willie. That's who my opponent's gonna pick. But I'm a guy who likes a good old fashioned, hard working, fact based gentleman. So I'm gonna pick Mr. Piles. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with my man Willie on the, the 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 fundamental reason why I'm going with my man Willie is because if Ben thinks Christian's the right choice, then that means Willie is. That's all you got? That's, that's it? all I got. That's it. Yeah. That's all I got. I, I knew you'd pick white collar Willie because he, he's a typical Listen, politician. If you go left, I'm going right. Okay? That's that's that that's that's what this country should be doing when it comes to what's best for our sport. You're making you're making this decision really easy for the people, Tommy. You're making the decision so simple. <laughs> I I and sure am. And there's only one man. You I don't, sure am. You don't have the temperament to be the president of wrestling, Tommy. You're just unfit for the job. I never thought I would say this, but I think my opponent is unfit for this job. I never thought I'd say this, but if I am elected president, I am going to instruct my leadership team to do a thorough investigation on Mr. Askren's belongings and his business and his happenings. <laughs> you have the right to do that. Um, I sure do. Okay, last last thing, guys, as, as we kind of wrap it up, I, I do appreciate your time. Um, this is a two-part deal. Uh, we want you to tell us Two things here about your opponent. Uh, what are his, his biggest strengths and, and his greatest weaknesses? Uh, ben, you can go first. Sure. Well, well, what I can say nice about my opponent, Tommy, is he doesn't quit. He's a fighter. And, you know, I think I can respect that. I can respect the fact that, that he's just he's tough. He doesn't quit. He keeps fighting. But his biggest weakness is his politician side. No one wants to see that. This is the, the sport of wrestling needs real change, and that's only going to come from a guy who is all talk or no talk, all action. And that's the kind of candidate I am. I'm all talk, no action. So when I am elected to be the president of wrestling, he just I'm said he's get all the talk, no action for the people. Okay, Tommy, best uh, and worst strengths and weaknesses for for Mr. Astro. I think like many people, your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness, and I think it's no different for my opponent. I think that he says what's on its mind, and I really respect the fact that he does not hold anything back. Whatever is on his mind, he says. That being said, I think that occasionally, in order to move things along and satisfy a lot of different people, you need to massage the way that you present things so that what you want to accomplish actually gets accomplished. And I think my opponent is a little bit of a sensationalist. He likes to say things to get a rise out of people. And and although there's something admirable in that, and that's what I really respect about him, I also think it would cost him as president of our sport and cost our sport, quite honestly. <clears throat> All right. Guys, closing statements. Um, and you'll have you'll have up to ninety seconds and, and may rebut. Um why are you the guy for the job? Why should you be elected, voted well, in? Let me just start here. Let me just start here, Mr. Moderator. This, this debate. Sorry. This debate was. We're going to Brown. What is this? Two on one here? Is this two on one? Oh, I see how it is. We're going to. We have a process, and we're going to continue to follow this process. So I'm up. Why are you the guy for the job? I think I'm the guy for the job because I have the appropriate temperament. I think I have uh, an underground support of leaders from around our sport nationwide that are going to band together in the event that I am elected and do great things with the sport. I think that I've been in the sport. I've lived in the sport. Um, I have a good understanding of what it needs to get done on the mat as well as off of the mat. And I think that my track record proves that, that uh, I'm the ideal candidate. And more, more than anything that I'm qualified to do, um, quite honestly, and I don't want to end the debate on a sour note, but I need to be real, I think the fact that my opponent is so unqualified and so unfit to lead is really the most compelling case as to why I should be involved um, in the leadership of our sport. All right. Ben, Mr. Askren. Well, you, uh, you know uh, what? I, I think... 
I think my temperament is actually my strong suit. That's what everyone tells me. And if you look at my balance sheet, my balance sheet will point out <laughs> that my temperament is my strong point. Especially now, the scramble video balance sheet. Damn straight, Tommy. So what what my opponent is trying to do here, is, and I think the entire debate has been an example, is he tries to smooth talk and, and you know get everyone over to his side. But he's a typical politician. All talk, no action. That's what Tommy Rollins is about. He's going to get in office. He's already bought and paid for. Mr. Rollins is already bought and paid for. He's not going to make any of the changes that we need. And, and I'm, I'm going to be a president of all of the people of wrestling, not just the financial backers who are going to be in Tommy's pocket making the decisions for him. I'm going to be a president of action who's going to get stuff done, who's going to make change. Not like my opponent. All right, gentlemen. We very much appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to talk about these important documents. Excuse me, these important topics. Do you have um, the documents, that, Mr. Bader? Okay, and after this, hopefully before the second debate, Tom, you'll release your tax documents, and Ben, you will release those emails. Um, but until then, we'll let the media circus continue. And uh, we, we wish you both the best moving forward. Guys, thanks so much. And thank you again, Defense. Thank you again, Defense Soap. Mr. Ashton, I think pockets. you would agree. I think you would agree you should, we should be thanking Defense Soap, right? Well, I'm not, a, I'm not the type of politician who takes money from special interest groups. But if I was, Defense, group, Defense Soap would be a great group, special interest group to take <laughs> donations from. I know that's the type of politician you are, Tommy, but not mine. Not me. <laughs> Got it. Got it. You are listening to the T. Rowan Funky Show and it is brought to you by Defense Soap. Defend what you've built. Tommy, I got to say, I, I tried these products. He shipped me a box. Uh, I love them. I've, I've had, uh, if you know me, you know I had, I've had ringworm issues for a long time. Um, so I, you know, I'm looking forward to putting these in my repertoire and, and hoping uh, the ringworm does not come back ever. No doubt, Ben. And to top that off, the company was created by wrestlers, Guy Seiko, Wrestled at Cleveland State University. His son was an All-American in Virginia, so these people really get it. They know what the wrestling community needs.